definitely prove the existence of dark matter. And I thought, hmm, okay, let's, let's, let's look at this. So my student and I, Joe Bernstein, started doing a lot of work and using log to see whether we could fit this data. And we published a paper in the monthly notice of the Royal Astronomical Society of England, which uh, showed that you can fit the data with MOB. So the, the Royal Astronomical Society in England produced a press release based on this paper. And this press release annihilated the press release by NASA. Because this press release said, no, this does not prove the existence of dark matter. Okay, so one press release annihilated the other. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, there's another merging cluster called Abel 520. It's called the Cosmic Train Wreck. It's happened about 2.4 billion light years away. And I call this the anti-bullet cluster because it does the opposite to the bullet cluster. The dark matter, when the, uh, when the, uh, the clusters collide, the dark matter particles are collisionless, so they just pass right through. And the galaxies are so far away from one another in the clusters that they pass right through. But the, the um, visible matter sticks in the middle because the visible matter interacts with other matter and pressure and uh, it stays there. So the red is the, is the uh, visible matter, which is very hot, and the blue is the putative dark matter. And what they do is they do gravitational lensing measurements here and here where there is no matter, so to speak, and find that there is in fact matter. It's called dark matter. There's no visible matter there. Okay? And ah, lo and behold, you have uh, dark matter. In this case, it, this doesn't happen. The dark matter appears, does not appear to have separated. And uh, whereas the galaxies have. So this is not good for the dark matter people. There's still a lot of controversy about this. And uh, as of uh, a few days ago, I checked on Google, and there has been no difference in this situation as yet. So another possible test of uh, MOG is to use globular clusters at the edge of our Milky Way. And uh, we, we, we make a a prediction from the field equations, solving the equations for the uh, dispersion, so-called dispersion velocity of these stars. The globular clusters are dense spherical symmetric systems of stars. And uh, they're smaller, much smaller than galaxies. So the prediction is that you get Newtonian gravity for these uh, systems. And we predict without any arbitrary adjustable parameters just give me the mass of the globular cluster, which is measured, and I can predict the result. And it agrees with the data, so it's a prediction. And by the way, there is no dark matter in these globular clusters, and nobody understands why, because I don't have to worry about that, because I don't have any dark matter. <laughs> okay, let's get on to cosmology. Now, we take the field equations of the theory, and we we construct a computer code, and we solve the computer code without leaving anything out, and we get a result for the universe. And uh, the result is really quite interesting. First of all, we find that uh, at time t equal to zero, there is no singularity. There's no Big Bang singularity. And I don't like singularities. And Einstein didn't like them. And uh, this is a, a positive feature of the theory. It's called a bounce cosmology. The universe bounces as it goes through time t equal to zero. So this explains what's happening. My universe, it's an, uh, the evolution, it's an ev evolution of an endless universe. There is no Big Bang singularity t equal to zero. T equal to zero is a time marker. And uh, what comes out of the solution is that, that the universe, there are two mirror universes. And one mirror universe is time going to positive infinity. A of t is, what is called the cosmic scale. It determines the, the structure of the 
how the universe is evolving. So A of t increases away from t equals zero for positive t. And then there's a mirror universe and that increases away from t equals to zero towards minus infinity. And I said increase because I reverse time. The hour of time is reversed going from here to there as co co compared to going from here to there. There's a, uh, there's a reversal of the hour of time. And this means that what's called entropy is always positive. There's a second law of thermodynamics that says that entropy always increases positively. And I don't want to violate that law. It's like a sacrosanct like the conservation of energy. So, in this mirror universe, people see apples flying into trees. <coughs> An omelet smashed on the floor flies up into the frying pan, becomes a perfect egg. Okay? And uh, for them, this is perfectly normal. In this mirror universe, it's the opposite for us in the room here and myself. Apples don't fly up into trees, they fall down and hit you, like the one that hit Newton's head. <coughs> and uh, this is the kind of universe that comes out from my theory. This has all sorts of impl implications, uh, which I don't want to get into at the moment. Now, things get tough. We fit, we've gone from the solar system, and by the way, Einstein and Newton gravity work very well in the solar system. And the theory Mark has to tell, say that. The, the observations, the relativistic observations of the solar system are very accurate. One part in 10 to the 5 for a delay of time that might come off a spacecraft. So I have to fit all that. Okay? Then you move out from the solar system and you go to the globular clusters. You still get Newton. You go from the globular clusters to galaxies, dwarf galaxies low surface brightness, high surface brightness, spiral galaxies. And now you begin to see not coming into play without dark matter. All of that has to be fitted. Then you get to the clusters of galaxies. And if you don't have dark matter in Einstein gravity, the, the galaxies just fly away from the clusters. They're not stable. But with increased gravity strength and more for the clusters, you um, you do get stable clusters, everything works, it's been published. Now we get to say, say, I give a talk, okay, in a conference, and I say, well, we, this is done, we've done this, and someone stands up and says, what about cosmology? And you say, oh, well, we haven't done that yet. Go away. <laughs> so you have to get to cosmology, and there's a large amount of data from uh, satellite spacecraft and so on that's been gathered and telescopes over the last especially over the last 20 years even over the last 10 years 12 years it's quite remarkable the pace at which this is going because knowledge is now a science so the understanding of the universe is a science it wasn't 80 years ago it wasn't a science because there was very little data that we could go on so this is quite exciting Anyway, we have to fit the uh, so-called acoustical power spectrum, and we do, uh, from, as observed from the, the uh, WMAP data from NASA, the, group, the um, Wilkinson Microwave and that probe data, number five. <coughs> now we come to the uh, supernova data, and again we have to fit the fact that uh, uh, the, 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 the supernova seem to be dimming the farther away than we thought they were that this means that the universe is supposedly accelerating in its, in its expansion expansion of the universe is accelerating and there's a standard model uh, model for this involving as we'll see Einstein's cosmological constant lambda how do we verify Mark? Well, we talked about globular clusters, but it's not good enough just to be a Xerox machine and give me a dark matter result, and I just crank my mark and out comes my result and say, yeah, I, I can do that. You need to be able to 
to to to